Hello, Summoners, and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and I'm here with the 12.21 mid patch update. We'll be going over updated tier lists for all five roles and follow up on the balance changes from the patch. But before we jump into things, I just want to give a quick shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you guys a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24 7, just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's get on to this tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. We'll be moving Lilia down to the S tier for this patch. Remember, when we give a tier list ranking, it's an overall thing. Depending on the matchup, she can still easily feel like an OP tier pick. Specifically, when you land against AD Bruisers where you can rush Frozen Heart, Lilia is insanely busted. As long as you don't int the first couple of levels, you basically can't ever lose lane with it. Even outside of those, she's of course a super strong pick. She takes quite a bit of learning, since you need to bob in and out of fights instead of just hard committing to them like most other extended fighters. But once you get her down, she's incredibly annoying for her foes to deal with. One tip for Lilia is that you should be rarely grouping with her. The only time it's really okay to do so is if you have Flash up and really need to fight with your team to contest Dragon or Baron. Otherwise, stick to splitting and fighting either 1v1s or small skirmishes. Darius moves up to the S tier. If you have a strong early start with Darius, he's easily one of the best champions to take the game over with. He very quickly becomes impossible to manage and can absolutely roll a side lane. When ahead in the mid game, he can often 1v2 and even 1v3. He also has a lot of team fighting potential, but there are also some things that you have to consider. For one, you only ever want to 5v5 when you have Ghost up. You needed to close the gap and stick to targets. You also need to look at comps. If the enemy team has a lot of peel and a tank busting damage dealer, and your team doesn't have that much to enable you, it may be best to stay in a side lane. So all that being said, the one thing keeping Darius from making it to the OP tier is a little bit of a consistency issue. With perfect wave management and awareness of the enemy jungler, there's little that can be done against them. But most players are prone to accidentally hitting the wave at some point, which can lead to being open to pressure from the enemy jungler. If you can overcome that little hiccup, you can easily hard carry most games from that role that everybody else calls useless. Swain moves down to the A tier. If you can make it to your two item spike and group up for fights, he's an insanely strong carry. But he has a couple of flaws that we think warrant this emotion. For one, his landing phase can be a bit iffy. Most champs in the top lane pool are pretty good at extended fights, and in this long lane, can pose a problem for Swain. In the mid lane, he works well in 1v1s because he can easily take a burst trade and back off. But in the top lane, you just get chased down once your abilities are on cooldown. The other big issue that he faces is that his side laning capabilities aren't that great. Against tanks and some juggernauts, he may be okay, but against higher damage bruisers, he usually falls off really hard past 2 or 3 items. Now that Cassante has been out for a couple of days, we're going to add him to the tier list. His performance is pretty horrible, with his win rate sitting in the upper 30s at the moment. That being said, I think this is pretty par for the course for the majority of new launches. Just look at Udyr's VGU. He had similar numbers and was so OP that he needed a couple of nerfs to bring him down, and he's still popping off. Anyway, since it's so iffy how good he really is, we're just going to throw him into the B tier for now. At the very least, you definitely don't want to blind pick him, since traditional tank counters like Alawi and Lilia have an absolute field day against him. He also moves up to the C tier. This doesn't really mean too much. I mean, he's still a pretty bad pick with only a few good lanes. And even then, there are almost always better options. Gwen also moves up to the C tier. In theory, Gwen is a lot better than this. As a counter pick, she can be really strong and can snowball out of control very fast. But that's assuming that she's played super well. In the middle and lower elos, it just usually doesn't pan out that well. And her stats show it. She just seems to be too hard for most players to really pull off. Kenan moves down to the D tier. Once upon a time, he was one of the best top lane picks in the game, but nowadays picking him is basically trolling. Even as a ranged champion, he's the one that ends up being bullied in almost every matchup. His super strong team fighting doesn't really make up for his instinct lane, especially since he's usually so far behind going to the mid game that he doesn't really do much damage. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Olaf moves up to the OP tier. Neither he nor the items that he builds have really been touched lately, but slight meta shifts have really pushed him up to the top of the list. Not only is Olaf super strong, but he's also really easy to execute, which is a key part of a champion being considered OP outside of high elo. His clear is fast and healthy, his dueling and early ganks are strong, and if you can get an early lead, he has crazy snowball potential. He can also build fairly flexibly. He can go for more damage heavy for carrying hard, with items like Trinity Force and Blade of the Rune King being great for 1v1s and small skirmishes. If you want to be a big beefy frontliner, you want to mix a bruiser items like Gore Drinker and Death Stance, along with some full tank items to be a huge damage soaker. Even with a more durable build like this, you deal a lot of damage and can be a huge threat in fights. Shivana moves down to the S tier. Remember, moves like this don't really mean that much. The difference between OP and S tier is that the champions in the OP tier have just a bit more carrying capabilities or are slightly more consistent. 
At the end of the day, whatever champs you play best out of these two tiers is going to get you better results. Kha'Zix has made a bounce back lately, so we're moving him up to the S tier as well. For me, this means that he's a bit too strong. Assassins should always be Feast for Famine pigs, so when they're consistent enough to make it to the S or OP tier, it means that they're feasting a little bit too often. Kha'Zix is one of the assassins that ends up in this situation pretty often. True to his character, Kha'Zix's gameplay is very adaptable, making him a champion that can be played into a variety of matchups and enemy team comps and still be useful. His low cooldowns utility on his Evolved W means that he doesn't have to be super ahead to carry fights. When he is ahead, he's absolutely oppressive. There's also his itemization. You can build Pure Assassin with Duskblade and other lethality items to pop Squishy after Squishy or go for a more bruiserish build with Eclipse and any mix of Death Stance, Black Cleaver, and even Styrax if you want to beef up. Echo moves up to the S tier. Mirror what I just said about Kha'Zix. Again, it's just unhealthy for an Assassin to be this consistent in any role. What's even more annoying in Echo's case is that he has the option to do one of those build tank and still do stupid damage builds that are just a little bit too popular right now. Frostfire Gauntlet and Sunfire Aegis into Nash's Tooth and more tank or AP Bruiser items shouldn't be able to assassinate ADCs so easily. No wonder that role is not very fun anymore. That's just my personal opinion. Dragon has been doing decent again, so we're moving him up to the A tier. He has really strong ganks early and great team fighting later on with his ultimate. His only one weakness is that he doesn't have a great clear speed. This means that you are kind of reliant on playing high tempo early, you get your team ahead fast, and start forcing fights for dragons, or you just end up being outscaled by farm heavy junglers. Shen is being demoted right back down to the C tier. We were hopeful that his buffs this patch would make him at least a little bit better, but what we warned has happened, and they didn't really solve any of his problems. He's a champion that needs to snowball really hard early to do anything in the mid to late game, and he's just left in a state of famine more often than not. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Shinomer has been doing better and better over the past few patches, and now we think it's time to move him up to the S tier. While he may not be an assassin, he definitely falls under that category of champions that are kind of unhealthy for the game when they start doing super well. No one likes playing against Shinomer. The early game is basically lottery. Will he spin in and crit 3 times in a row for first blood at level 1, or will he just die and give up a kill for no reason? Later on, it's even more frustrating, and as he becomes a permanent source of pressure on the map. Even when behind, he can take towers in no time at all if he's left unchecked. When, when he's ahead, he's basically impossible to deal with. Send one champion or even two, and he usually kills them, even under turret thanks to his ultimate. Send more than that, and the rest of the enemy team just takes objectives elsewhere. Twitch is a new addition to the mid lane tier list. This may be an off meta pick, but one that we truly think is strong. He's definitely worthy of a spot in the S tier, and honestly, even could be considered OP. He's surprisingly lane dominant, able to bully both melee and ranged champions, and against foes that respect you too much, he can just go for roams to the side lanes. And if his early game is strong, his scaling is absolutely nuts. AP Twitch has some comparable DPS to AD Twitch, while also doing insane bursts and having a slow that may as well be a brute late game. Now that people are getting the hang of Syndra, she moves up to the A tier. The biggest hurdle is getting past the early game. If you can make it to about 2 items at level 11, she really starts to become more impactful, and if you make it to 3 items, you should be able to hard carry most fights. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. We're once again moving Neela back up to the OP tier. We moved her down here in the last tier list because it seemed like she's falling off a bit, but it seems like that was just a fluke. She's back to performing at the top of the role, and it could be even argued that she's the best ADC for the lane right now. Vagar gets a promotion up to the S tier this patch. Despite typically being considered a scaling champion, Vagar is a super lane dominant bot laner. The reason he's so much more consistent in the bot lane than mid lane is simple. In the mid lane, you have to deal with champions like Zed or Fizz that can hop right over your cage and force fights on you. In the bot lane, the champs are much more easy to neutralize with Cage, making it a lot easier to safely farm up in the first few levels. Post 6, all ends in the bot lane are a lot easier to pull off, since they have a support that can help you set up to nuke your target. To finish things off, we have our supports. We were really expecting Blitzcrank's nerfs to be enough to put him down to the S tier this patch, and we were even thinking that he maybe even fall further down to the A, but it seems like we underestimated his tenacity. He's performing super well, now we're moving him back up to the OP tier. Leona moves down to the S tier. There are just too many champions in the OP tier at the moment, and with two of them, Maokai and Amumu, filling a very similar role and doing it much better and more consistently than her, she just needs to be brought down a notch. And that about wraps things up for our 12.21 min patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.